Good morning. Um, today I have got the BGCS guidelines summarised for endometrial cancer um, in hope uh, that this will help you with your MRCOG revision. Um, this is a much awaited guideline summary and I hope that this will really benefit you. Let's get started. So endometrial cancer is the sixth most common uh, cancer worldwide. It's the 14th most common cancer overall, fourth most common cancer in females in the UK. Um, there's obviously um, one of the um, reasons is increasing obesity. It also increases with age and um, was highest in females aged 75 to 79 in the UK. So testing, so offer testing for Lynch syndrome in all patients with endometrial cancer. That's what the NICE says. 3% of all endometrial cancers are due to Lynch syndrome. The gene for the tumor protein P53 is located on the short arm of chromosome 17. 30% of endometrial cancer is associated with BRCA1 mutation. So for asymptomatic women, uh, a transvaginal scan or endometrial sampling does not improve outcome from endometrial cancer. So it's not, so no screening is recommended for asymptomatic patients. For Lynch syndrome, of, offer annual screening with um, transvaginal ultrasound, hysteroscopy and uh, or endometrial um, sampling from the age of 35 years um, after counselling the patient. Lynch syndrome and abnormal vaginal bleeding should be counselled to seek urgent medical attention for suspected endometrial cancer. So women taking tamoxifen, so um, if there's abnormal vaginal bleeding, um, then that's a red flag. And if they have any other red flag symptoms, then they should have urgent investigation by transvaginal ultrasound, hysteroscopy and endometrial um, sampling. Prevention, so healthy weight, so maintaining a healthy weight through dietary intervention and uh, physical, uh, regular physical activity helps to reduce the risk of endometrial cancer and for overweight um, BMI, so the overweight patients, um, they can go through uh, bariatric surgery in order to maintain a healthy BMI. Prevention in high risk groups. So risk reducing hysterectomy is effective in preventing endometrial cancer in Lynch syndrome in, uh, in patients who've, um, who have uh, finished their families. So history and examination. So uh, postmenopausal bleeding, unscheduled bleeding on HRT, persistent intermenstrual or irregular bleeding, hematuria, postmenopausal women with abnormal vaginal discharge should have an abdominal, speculum and pelvic examination. Premenopausal women with persistent intermenstrual or persistent irregular bleeding and infrequent heavy bleeding who are obese or have polycystic ovarian syndrome or are on tamoxifen and treatment for um, heavy menstrual bleeding has been unsuccessful require histological assessment which means they need a biopsy as per NICE guidelines via urgent gynecology uh, assessment which means within two weeks. So transvaginal ultrasound with um, uh, can can measure the um, thickness of the endometrium um, and this should be employed as an in initial investigation for women with presenting with uh, postmenopausal bleeding. So accuracy and uh, cutoff for endometrial thickness. So endometrial thickness with a cutoff of uh, greater than or equal to four millimeters should be investigated. So that's endometrial thickness on uh, transvaginal ultrasound of greater than or equal to four millimeters should be investigated. Endometrial thickness of less than four millimeters and in the absence of any irregularity of the endometrial profile, that, that is, you know, there's no presence of fluid, there's no disparity of any endometrial thickness measurement, um, they do not require any further investigations unless there is recurrent uh, postmenopausal bleeding. 
Suppose men menopause is bleeding, patients who are not on HRT, a transvaginal endometrial thickness of greater than or equal to four millimeters, um, then they need um, an outpatient endometrial biopsy. If they have persistent symptoms and a negative uh, pipel, hysteroscopy should be considered. Hysteroscopy indications are if outpatient endometrial biopsy is not possible, ultrasound uh, shows irregularities, or there's high risk of endometrial cancer, um, hysteroscopy, uh, if possible, should be offered as an outpatient. Um, outpatient hysteroscopy is the first line investigation for uh, looking at endometrial thickness of more than four millimeters. So premenopausal women uh, or uh, heavy menstrual bleeding, uh, hyst uh, hysteroscopy, um, should have hysteroscopy and a directed biopsy as per NICE via a gynecology clinic. Recurrent postmenopausal bleeding should be investigated by hysteroscopy and endometrial biopsy. Um, if there is unexplained recurrent postmenopausal bleeding, then hysterectomy uh, should be uh, considered. So if they have confirmed or suspected endometrial cancer, then their um, case should be discussed at a multidisciplinary team. If um, FIGO stage 1A endometrioid cancer, grade 1 or grade 2, they, they can undergo surgery by a gynecologist at, endo, at a gynecological uh, cancer diagnostic unit um, by a, a core member of the MDT team. So that's Fecal stage 1A endometrioid cancer, grade 1 or grade 2, can have surgery by a gynecologist at a gynecological centre. Um, with And this, this, this person also has to be a member of the MDT team. High-grade uh, cancers, like your, uh, you know, your grade 3 endometrioid, your clear cell, uh, carcinosarcoma, serous cancers, or suspected FIGO 1B, where there's more than 50% of myometrial invasion on MRI, uh, or, there's, or, or the disease is more than this, they should have surgery at a cancer centre by a subspecialty trained surgeon who is a core member of the MDT team. For radiotherapy or any systemic therapy, um, that should be provided by a medical or a clinical oncologist who is also a core member of the MDT team. So pre-op assessment should be carried out to assess patients' eligibility for surgery, whether they're fit for surgery and also what route of surgery will be carried out. CA1 to 5 blood tests should be um, done. It's, uh, it can detect unexpected metastatic, metastatic disease, but without other indications is not recommended. CT scan of the pelvis for low-grade disease is not indicated routinely. Um, a chest uh, x-ray or a CT um, scan of the chest, depending on the grade of the tumour, is part of staging performed in all women. High-risk histology types or deep myometrial invasion of locally advanced disease um, should have a CT chest abdo pelvis. So that's high-risk histology type or deep myometrial invasion of locally advanced disease should get a CT. Um, CT chest abdo pelvis is recommended for staging of high-grade endometrial cancer. So MRI pelvis plus or minus abdomen um, can assess extent of local regional disease and estimate depth of the myometrial invasion um, um, if results would direct location of surgery and then management of lymph nodes. MRI of the abdominal pelvis um, can be done for conservative management with progesterone uh, a coil in order to assess appropriateness of conservative management and as a baseline for tumour response assessment. A PET CT um, is not currently used in the initial staging of endometrial cancer outside of clinical trials. Patients with unexpected high-risk findings in, in definitive uh, histology will require CT chest abdo pelvis to plan appropriate adjuvant radiotherapy or chemotherapy if not performed pre-op. So enhanced recovery after surgery uh, improves outcomes following gynecological oncology surgery and should be the standard of care. Standard surgery is total hysterectomy and bilateral salpingia oophorectomy without vaginal cough or 
para, uh, paramitrectomy. Hysterectomy, which salpingectomy with ovarian conservation, can be considered in premenopausal women with grade 1 endometrioid endometrial cancer and less than 50% of myometrial invasion and no extra uterine disease on imaging such as MRI, CT with uh, low risk disease. Minimal access surgery um, has significantly low risk of post-op morbidity uh, and it's a preferred route in patients who are suitable for it. Um, lymphadectomy for non-bulky lymph nodes is not recommended, especially for low-risk endometrial cancer. Um, it does not reduce the risk of recurrence or improve survival. Sentinel lymph node biopsy has a high diagnostic accuracy and should replace lymphadenectomy of non-bulky nodes for staging. Surgical staging, including sentinel lymph uh, node biopsy and omental biopsy, may be appropriate in women uh, with disease greater than low risk. Avert stage 2 endometrial cancer, um, a, a, a TAH, so total abdominal hysterectomy, uh, bilateral salpingia oophrectomy is adequate. Radical hysterectomy should only be considered to obtain tumor free margins. Patients unfit for surgical treatment, so uh, can have a vaginal hysterectomy, for example, um, can also have definitive pelvic radiotherapy or progestin or aromatase inhibitors. So combined external beam radiotherapy and intracavity bracket therapy uh, can be considered for high-grade tumors with deep endometrial invasion and or stage 2 disease. Intracavity bracket therapy alone can be considered for low-grade um, stage 1 tumors without deep myometrial invasion. Progestin therapy can be considered for low-grade tumors to postpone surgical management for three to six months for temporary or reversible medical reasons. Progestin and aromatase inhibitors in postmenopausal women consider uh, in, in, in those whom in surgery and radiotherapy is not an option. So fertility preserving management um, can be offered, uh, but this management should be in specialist centers uh, for atypical hyperplasia or stage 1A, grade 1A endometrial cancer without myometrial invasion. This um, may be suitable for fertility preserve um, for sparing uh, management. This should be counseled regarding success rates, need for close surveillance before and after treatment, recurrence rates and the need for hysterectomy um, if the treatment fails or once the childbearing is complete. Medroxyprogesterone acetate of 400 to 600 milligrams a day or um, magesterol acetate of 160 to 320 milligrams a day and or the coil for six months, for six to 12 months can be, uh, can be used. Um, hysteroscopic resection prior to progest progestin therapy can be considered. Um, they can also have an additional prescription of uh, gonadotropin releasing hormones that may be considered as well. Strict surveillance during treatment includes endometrial biopsy and, remit, er, and repeat imaging at three monthly intervals to exclude progressive disease. Maximize chances of pregnancy after successful fertility um, sparing treatment because recurrence is common and their window of opportunity is short. After six months of proven disease regression, maintenance progesterone therapy should be uh, considered in in responders wishing to delay pregnancy. Endometrial surveillance by a biopsy and scan uh, at three to six months, then six to 12 monthly uh, is appropriate during follow-up. Progestin therapy may be considered for intrauterine recurrence. Hysterectomy and bilateral salpingectomy is indicated if conservative management fails and once childbearing is complete. Ovarian preservation uh, can be considered uh, in, in, in those who do not have um, Lynch syndrome. Surgery for more advanced disease at presentation. So for fecal stage three and four endometrial cancer, debulking surgery, including bulky lymph nodes, um, if, if complete macroscopic resection is feasible and the patient is fit for radical surgery. Limited surgery with hysterectomy for palliation of symptoms or other palliative treatment options are alternatives and should be discussed with the patient. Routine systemic, uh, systematic pelvic and periotic lymph node dissection of non-suspicious nodes is not recommended. Um, surgery for advanced disease at presentation who have responded to new adjuvant um, chemotherapy, debulking uh, palliative surgery 
um, to, to in order to provide uh, symptom relief is also an option. So low risk endometrial cancer, no adjuvant treatment is recommended for those with, those with low risk endometrial cancer. If molecular classification is available, consider omitting adjuvant treatment in those with stage 1, 2 and pole mutation. So for intermediate risk endometrial cancer, vaginal walled bracket therapy is recommended to reduce the risk of vaginal recurrence. Omission of adjuvant brachy is considered for those especially under the age of 60 years. Molecular pole mutation uh, endometrial cancer uh, is considered low risk and those with P53 um, endometrial cancer with myometrial invasion are considered high risk. P53 um, ABN uh, endometrial cancer is restricted if it's restricted to a polyp or without myometrial invasion then there is no uh, data to guide treatment and an, uh, an adjuvant therapy is recommended. So high risk, uh, high intermediate risk uh, endometrial cancer, when surgical staging of lymph nodes has been performed, consider adjuvant vaginal brachytherapy alone. Um, uh, if, you know, if external beam radiotherapy is recommended for substantial um, lymphovascular uh, in invasion and for stage two tumors with high grade or deep endometrial, uh, sorry, uh, myometrial invasion. When surgical staging of lymph nodes has not been performed, then adjuvant external beam therapy is recommended, uh, adjuvant chemo is considered, substantially, if there's substantial lymphovascular uh, um, invasion present, adjuvant brachy alone considered for stage 2 low grade endometrial cancers without deep invasion. If molecular classification is known, those with poor mutation and P53 um, consider management as per low and high risk um, and disease uh, sections. So high risk endometrial cancer, so external beam radiotherapy with concurrent and adjuvant chemo or alternative sequential chemotherapy and radiotherapy is recommended. Chemotherapy alone or, or with vaginal brachytherapy may be an alternative option if systemic if, syst if systematic lymphadenectomy has been performed. So adjuvant chemo, uh, post-op uh, carboplatin uh, pacli uh, taxal chemotherapy is associated with a fecal stage and and uh, and and histological molecular subtype uh, dependent improvement in uh, in progression, in progression free survival and overall survival uh, irrespective of radiotherapy treatment. Um, four group molecular uh, classifier uh, provides a robust prognostic information and predicts um, benefit from adjuvant chemo. Um, centers should, should, should be working towards adopting this into their routine practice. So molecular subtyping is not, uh, if it's not performed, then um, adjuvant chemo is a recommended treatment option for women with uh, stage 3 and 4A endometrial uh, adenocarcinoma, um, women with myo uh, invasive stage 1 or 2 serious endometrial carcinoma, women with uh, myo-invasive stage 1 or 2 clear cell or undifferentiated endometrial carcinoma, adjuvant chemotherapy can be discussed as a potential treatment option with women with stage 1b or 2 grade 3 endometrial and endometrial endometrioid endometrial carcinoma where lymphadenectomy has not been performed or there is substantial lymphovascular space uh, invasion. If molecular subtyping has been performed, women with pole mutation endometrial cancer do not require adjuvant chemo. Adjuvant chemo is recommended for women with stage 1 um, to 4A, stage 1 to 4A, P53 endometrial cancer, women with stage 3 or 4A endometrial cancer with no specific molecular profile. Adjuvant chemo can be discussed as a potential treatment option with women with stage 3 and 4A, um, uh, uh, you know, endometrioid endometrial cancer, women with myoinvasive stage 1, 2, non uh, endometrioid high grade histological type. Subtypes uh, that are uh, they've got no uh, specific molecular type um, and can be entered uh, entry into molecular uh, molecularly stratified adjuvant trials should be actively considered. Um, concurrent cisplatin radiotherapy followed by carboplatin 
paclitaxel or sequential carboplatin paclitaxel and radiotherapy are appropriate treatment regimes if a combined modality adjuvant treatment is necessary. So for adjuvant radiotherapy, uh, intensity modulated radiotherapy technique um, should be used to reduce the risk of acute and long-term toxicity. External uh, beam radiotherapy is also uh, another technique that um, adjuvant radiotherapy may be given by. So primary treatment chemotherapy is a new adjuvant chemotherapy and interval bulking surgery may be an alternative uh, approach in treatment of selected patients with advanced endometrial cancer who are considered poor candidates for primary debulking surgery. Uh, new adjuvant chemo is, is reserved for patients where it would be expected that the primary debulking surgery would not achieve complete macroscopic resection. Carboplatin and paclitaxel are standard first-line chemotherapy re uh, regimes for the treatment of advanced and recurrent endometrial cancer regardless of histology type. Progestrogens alternative for treatment for low-grade hormone receptor positive endometrial or recurrent endometrioid endometrial cancer. Advanced and recurrent endometrial cancer um, should be considered for entry into first-line clinical trials uh, to evaluate targeted therapy. So management of recurrent disease or recurrent endometrial can cancers should be managed by MDTs with expertise in managing recurrent disease. All patients should have baseline cross-sectional imaging where possible biopsy for reassessment of estrogen and progesterone receptor status and molecular profile should be considered. All patients who are candidate for surgical resection or radiotherapy should undergo PET-CT to exclude a multi-site disease. Local regional recurrence, so isolated vaginal recurrence is in radiotherapy naive patients consider for radio, uh, radical radiotherapy. Patients with isolated vaginal vault recurrence who have received pelvic or vault radiotherapy previously um, should be only considered for surgery if recurrent if resection is achievable with clear margins relapse that on that on ct uh, scanning appears to be confined and uh, amenable to radical uh, therapy uh, particularly if excentration is considered should be staged using a pet uh, or a ct scan prior to sta starting radical therapy treated surgically for pelvic recurrence with positive margins residual disease post-op radiotherapy or brachytherapy can be considered Radiotherapy uh, pre-treated patients, so pelvic excentration consider for patients with single site central pelvic recurrence and confirmed with aim to achieve margins clear of microscopic disease. First line systemic um, chemotherapy, so chemotherapy naive patients who relapse with systemic disease or those who relapse more than six months after receiving adjuvant chemo should be considered for double chemotherapy with carboplatin and paclitaxel. Second line, um, so if the relapse is over six months after carboplatin and paclitaxel, further platinum-based chemotherapy should be considered. If the relapse is less than six months after carboplatin and paclitaxel, no treatment that uh, should be considered um, that, that that could be that should be the standard of care. Second line systemic therapy like uh, PD1 and PDL1 inhibitors, um, if the cancer is mismatch repair deficient or carries a pole mutation or has a tumor mutational burden. Hormonal treatment uh, can be the first choice in those with low-grade hormone receptor positive disease. Um, selective cases with long disease, free interval, well-differentiated tumours, uh, lung-only metastases and high progesterone receptor expression in the tumour may be candidates for primary hormonal therapy. Management of uterine sarcomas. Standard treatment is total hysterectomy and bilateral salpingectomy. Lymphadenectomy for staging purposes is not indicated. Uh, patients with low-grade endometrial uh, stromal cancer, sarcoma should not have post-op hormone replacement therapy. Use of adjuvant anti-estrogen therapy is not routinely indicated. Adjuvant pelvic radiotherapy has not been shown to improve local central or, or survival and is not routinely indicated in fecal stage 1 and 2 uterine sarcomas. It might be considered for selected high-risk cases for advanced or metast uh, metastatic uh, uterine lymphocytic sarcomas uh, and undifferentiated endometrial sarcomas. Um, they are treated systemically with uh, same drugs as soft tissue sarcomas. Um, so uh, these the, the drug names uh, gemcitabine and um, docetaxel uh, may be useful for um, um, lymphocytic. Uh,
um, um, lymiosarcoma. So advanced or metastatic endometrial stromal sarcoma can be treated with anti-estrogen therapy with aromatase inhibitor or progestogen. Involvement of sarcoma multidisciplinary team is recommended. So um, leomyosarcoma, um, the cornerstone of management uh, of early uterine uh, leomyosarcoma is total hysterectomy plus or minus bilateral salpingectomy, oophorectomy in young women is not mandatory. Routine pelvic lymphadenectomy is not recommended. Uh, Morselation of the fibroid should be avoided in peri and postmenopausal women. Um, limited data does not support the use of adjuvant chemo or radiotherapy. Um, Patients with advanced or recurrent uh, uh, leomyosarcoma um, are usually offered chemotherapy unless complete surgical resection is possible. Management of patients with primary or recurrent leomyosarcoma requires an MDT approach, preferably with a discussion with the regional sarcoma team. Adjuvant treatment for uterine leo leomyosarcoma, post operative therapy not recommended. Consider selected high risk cases, example, uh, positive surgical excision margins. Do not support the use of adjuvant chemo uh, in early stage disease. In stage three and four, who have undergone complete surgical rese resection and at a high risk of disease recurrence uh, slash progression, adjuvant chemo, but um, whether this improves survival. Um, that's not been established. So management of uterine adenosarcomas, hysterectomy and bilater bilateral salpingectomy, routine lymphadenectomy is not recommended. So management of early stage uterine adenosarcomas. So uterine adenosarcomas are uh, these mixed tumors with benign glandular and low grade sarcomatous stromal components. Uh, majority present with early stage disease. 80% are stage one with good prognosis. Uterine adenosarcoma with sarcomatous overgrowth, uh, high risk uh, sarcoma with over 25% uh, high grade sarcomatous component uh, have a poor prognosis. Follow-up for endometrial cancer should be individualized. Um, the anticipated risk of recurrence, side effects of treatment, and uh, local and patient factors should all be taken into account. It could be a patient-led follow-up, or it can be um, a telephone follow-up as well. So alternative uh, follow-ups to telephone follow-up does not appear to be inferior to the hospital follow-up. Uh, in terms of quality of life for stage 1 endometrial cancers. Follow-up should focus on detecting potential treat, treatable recurrence, such as isolated vaginal wall tumours, in women who have who could tolerate salvage radiotherapy or, ex, or exenterative uh, surgery. Information on symptoms uh, should be given, to the, so, and if there are any symptoms, then uh, they prompt urgent review. Uh, routine follow-up to detect recurrence uh, should be discontinued uh, in patients who are not fit for further treatment. Um, evidence does not support routine imaging or biochemical testing in follow-up for endometrial cancer. So, um, so the technique to pick up um, um, recurrence of the vaginal vault is identifying vault disease by inspection. Vaginal vault cytology is inappropriate. Pelvic side wall and central recurrent disease may be identified by manual by manual vaginal examination, rectal examination, or ultrasound. Stratified follow-ups are traditionally um, three to four monthly uh, follow-up for uh, endometrial cancer um, used to take place for the first two years followed by annual visits, uh, which is not evidence-based. Only small minority will develop recurrent disease and majority will present with vaginal bleeding between clinic appointments. Routine follow-up may delay presentation with symptoms. So for the low risk, you can offer patient-initiated follow-up. Um, uh, at the end of treatment for, indeme for indeme uh, intermediate uh, risk endometrial cancer of vaginal brachytherapy um, following hysterectomy, more likely to uh, these patients get more likely to suffer from treatment related side effects uh, than the low risk. Um, uh, they can they can still have low risk uh, of, of there's still low risk of recurrence in this group of patients and can can be offered patient initiated follow up after the end of treatment intermediate risk who decline vaginal vault brachytherapy or high intermediate risk or high risk or, or advanced endometrial cancers at presentation follow up is recommended usually in the in the form of appointments um, for the first two years uh, for high-grade tumours. High intermediate risk, 
Endometrial cancers have a 20% recurrence within the first two years after treatment. So clinic-based follow-up is recommended. Um, offer patient-initiated follow-up after two years as a recurrence, uh, risk of recurrence is only less than 7%. Patients should also be provided with supportive care, a uh, named key worker for them to contact, written information about treatment choices, side effects, um, the, the CNS, the cancer specialist nurse, with psychosexual um, counsellors, um, uh, should be part of the MDT. Um, so, um, you know, advice about HRT, lymphedema, lymphedema should be uh, referred to specialist lymphedema services. Um, you, if they have urinary symptoms, that should be referred to the uh, continent services. Um, they should be counselled about risks and symptoms of pelvic insufficiency, fractures and neuropathies. So psychosexual support and signposting is, is recommended. Factual information should be provided. Um, addition of radiotherapy, 81% of patients reporting sexual dysfunction and use of vaginal uh, dilator therapy. So, um, and, and they should be, um, and if they have uh, intention to carry on with um, with sexual um, intercourse, then they should have um, treatment with vaginal dilators or vibrators um, to reduce the risk of stenosis. Patient reported outcome measure called the PROMS is to identify sexual difficulties um, and suggest lubrication during intercourse or cause of vaginal estrogen. Um, if there's ongoing difficulties, then they need referral to psychosexual services. HRT following a treatment of endometrial cancer, so early stage disease, will be cured, life expectancy um, uh, making long term quality of life important. Menopausal symptoms can significantly affect quality of life, um, and, 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 ev and available evidence does not suggest significant harm. Lymphedema, so um, then this is how we manage the complications. So incidence is 0 to 50%, risk factors are raised BMI, uh, congestive cardiac failure and other comorbidities. Depends on the surgical intervention and increase in patients who've had radiotherapy and or lymphadenectomy. Um, information reducing the risk of lymphedema and, 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 and develop uh, and also refer to specialist uh, lymphedema services for assessment and management. Management of late uh, effects for treatment. Uh, so some of these can be permanent, progressive. Some will be managed by the patient uh, with, with their GP. Uh, some they will be seen in, in, in clinic in an outpatient setting and they can be investigated uh, there as well. So gastrointestinal side effects, so radiation induced enteropathy, like on, uh, so on, on, which might be seen with the oncologist, gastroenterologist, bowel surgeons, therapeutic uh, uh, radiographers, dietitians, and specialist nurses. Um, GI, uh, GI effects from radiotherapy include fecal urgency, diarrhea, leakage, rectal bleeding, malabsorption syndrome, ileus obstruction, and small bacterial overgrowth. Um, so uh, interventions like dietary, improved delivery of radiotherapy uh, with in intensity modulated radiotherapy and pharmacotherapies uh, are advised. Urinary tract late effects, so uh, they can develop strictures, contractions, obstruction, um, inflammation, impaired pelvic floor function, and the truth of overactivity uh, consequences can be of, of the treatment. Increased age, raised BMI may be predictive of urinary late effects. Management of pelvic uh, insufficiency fractures. Uh, so pelvic radiotherapy increases risk of pelvic insufficiency fractures in older women can occur under normal stresses on the bones. Gynecology cancer rates between 7.8% and 15.3% develop um, in 7 to 39 months post-treatment and the majority happen within Two years, 40% may be asymptomatic. Pelvic pain, weight on weight, pain on weight bearing, and immobility are signs of pelvic insufficiency fractures. MRI can diagnose pelvic insufficiency fractures and also exclude bone movements. Management of neuropathy and lumbar and lumbar cervical plexopathy. So chemotherapy related neuropathy uh, is is seen in six percent of patients in the first three to five uh, in three to five years. Radiation induced lumbar cervical plexopathy. It's a late effect of pelvic radiotherapy. It's rare. Bilateral uh, lower limb pain with numbness, weakness, uh, paresis or paralysis. MRI uh, can help in in diagnosing it. And management is supportive care and is irreversible. So this is a table uh, just uh, helping you to, um, uh, to to be able to uh, define what stage uh, one, uh, two, three, four cancer is. Um, I'm afraid you'll just need to read this yourself. 
uh, and also learn it uh, because it's quite important in the exam as uh, we've had questions previously where they've just described the tumour to say, oh, the tumour invades the bladder. What is the risk of this patient's survival and so forth? So if you don't know what stage that tumour is, it's difficult to um, to uh, be able to then define survival. Now, I have done already a video on survival rates in different stages of cancer for all the gynecological cancers. It's on my channel. I'll post a link for it uh, under this video so you can access it uh, by no um, and have no problems. So GX is grade is not assessed. Uh, G1 is well differentiated. G2 is moderately differentiated and G3 is poorly or undifferentiated. So for low risk cancers, in summary, you have no adjuvant treatment, intermediate risk, you have vaginal brachytherapy. For high intermediate risk, you have external beam therapy plus or minus vaginal uh, brachytherapy. For high risk, you have external uh, beam therapy plus or minus vaginal uh, brachytherapy along with chemotherapy with carboplatin and paclitaxel. So this is eligibility of patients for a patient initiative follow up. So completed primary treatment for a gynecological emergency and a clinically well. Patients should be willing and able to access health care. Uh, patients should be uh, without significant treatment related side effects um, that need ongoing management. Patients should not have recurrent disease. Patients should not uh, be on active or maintenance treatment. Patients should not be on uh, clinical trial where follow up uh, schemes are defined and limited to hospital based follow up. Patients should not have rare tumour with uncertain risks of recurrence and needed for ongoing management. Patient must be able to communicate their concerns without a significant significant language barrier or psychological uh, comorbidity and have uh, competence to agree to uh, PIFL. Thank you so much for uh, listening. If you are made to the end of this presentation, uh, please uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also share it with your friends and colleagues who you think may benefit from this in, 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 from this useful um, summary. Now, if you do want me to uh, carry on and do other gynecological cancers uh, from the BGCS guideline, such as ovarian cancer, vaginal cancer, uh, then please do comment and I shall look at summarising those for you as well.